Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you. Pollution curbs lifted in Indian capital despite very poor air quality. Pakistan's ex-PM Imran Khan welcomes probe into shooting. PDM chief terms attack a trauma. And Sri Lankan cricketer denied bail over sexual assault charges in Australia. And now for all the details, authorities in India's capital New Delhi said on Monday that primary schools will reopen this week and curbs will be lifted on certain construction activities after pollution levels improved to the very poor category from severe. Delhi's Environment Minister Gopal Rai said private demolition and construction will remain banned, but public works relating to highways and power transmission will be permitted. Primary schools will reopen in India's capital, New Delhi, from November 9 and curbs will be lifted on certain construction activities, Delhi's Environment Minister Gopal Rai said on Monday, after pollution levels improved to the very poor category from severe. Rai said that directions for work from home to government staff had also been amended and offices were functioning at full capacity. A thick layer of smog envelops the city with the onset of winters as cold, heavy air traps, construction dust, vehicle emissions and smoke from crop stubble burning in neighbouring states, causing a surge in respiratory illnesses among Delhi's 20 million people. The minister said private demolition and construction will, however, still remain banned, but public works relating to highways and power transmission will be permitted. फोज फिर फोज में फेज फोर में हाईवे रोड फ्लाईओवर ओवरब्रिज डीजेबी पाइपलाइन पावर ट्रांसमिशन पर और एक्स्ट्रा बैन लगाया गया था जिसको खोल दिया गया है प्राइवेट डिमोल्यूशन और कंस्ट्रक्शन का काम अभी भी बैन रहेगा द एयर क्वालिटी इंडेक्स इन नियरली ऑल मॉनिटरिंग स्टेशंस इन द सिटी वाज बिटवीन 300 टू 400 कंसीडर्ड वेरी पुअर which experts say leads to respiratory illnesses on prolonged exposure. However, it was an improvement on last week's reading of 400 to 500 in the severe category. Air quality could worsen later this week, however, the system of air quality and weather forecasting and research said on its website. And in news from Pakistan, Pakistan's opposition PTI party chief Imran Khan has appreciated the government's offer to launch a judicial probe to investigate the attack in which he was shot in the leg on Thursday. 70-year-old Khan was leading a protest march towards Islamabad to demand snap elections when a man opened fire, wounding him in the leg last week. Pakistan's former Prime Minister and Opposition PTI Chief Imran Khan said on Sunday that he welcomes the government's offer to launch a judicial commission to investigate the attack in which he was shot in the leg last Thursday. 70-year-old Khan was leading a protest march on Islamabad to demand snap elections where a man opened fire with an automatic weapon leaving several people wounded. Khan made the remarks in a social media live broadcast from a hospital from where he has been discharged as of now after receiving treatment for what he and his supporters called an assassination attempt. Shabazz Sharif ne baat ki judicial commission ki. To main welcome karta hoon ki judicial commission bana. Lekin mera pehla point hi hai. Ki judicial commission kya karegi? Jab jo teen logon कि मैंने नाम लिए हैं इन तीन के नीचे सारी वो एजेंसी जिन्हें इन्वेस्टिगेट कर रही हैं अब हम कैसे एक इम्पार्शल साफ और शिफाव इन्वेस्टिगेशन करवा सकते हैं इमरान खान सेड हिज एंटी गवर्नमेंट लॉन्ग मार्च रैली टुवर्ड्स इस्लामाबाद टू कॉल फॉर अर्ली इलेक्शंस 
which was disrupted by the attack, would restart on Tuesday, but that he would not join in person while he recovered from his injuries. Former Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi will lead the rally in his absence, he said. Meanwhile, ruling alliance PDM chief Maulana Fazlur Rahman said on Sunday he had his doubts over the attack on Imran Khan, terming the incident a drama. He said Khan has outclassed Indian actors Shah Rukh Khan and Salman Khan in acting. Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif earlier also said that Khan was making baseless allegations but that the government had requested the country's chief justice to form a judicial commission to investigate the claims. And laborers in Pakistan's Karachi city have expressed their concern over constant onslaught in inflationary pressure that has brought many to the brink of poverty. They have requested the government to think about the poor segments of the society and rationalize the prices. Laborers in Pakistan's Karachi city are facing constant onslaught of inflationary pressure that has brought many to the brink of poverty while they blame the government of not doing much to address the situation. The ongoing economic crisis has shattered the people's faith in the government to eradicate poverty and create jobs. The International Monetary Fund IMF stated in its latest report that stubborn higher inflation in the country would directly affect the unemployment rates in Pakistan as they will also increase. Locals have requested the government to think about the poor segments of the society and rationalize the prices. The Statistics Bureau in a statement said that Pakistan's consumer inflation accelerated in October to 26.6% for a year earlier, which has boosted food and electricity prices. Persistently high inflation has put severe strain on the South Asian country's economy, which is also reeling from falling foreign exchange reserves, a depreciating and unstable currency, as well as a widening current account deficit. Well arrested on charges of sexual assault on a woman during the T20 World Cup, Sri Lankan cricketer Danushka Gunatilaka was denied bail after a hearing at a local court in Sydney on Monday. Sri Lanka's cricket board has also suspended Gunatilaka after the charges surfaced. He will not be considered for any selections, it said in a statement. Sri Lankan cricketer Danushka Gunatilaka was denied bail by a court in Sydney on Monday after being charged with sexual assault of a woman while he was in Australia to play in the T20 World Cup. Gunatilika had attended court via video link. The bail hearing took place at the Downing Centre Court in Sydney. The 31-year-old cricketer has also been suspended following his arrest in Sydney, the country's cricket board said on Monday. Sri Lanka cricket will not consider him for any selections, it said in a statement. Well, the uh, application was refused. Um, well, uh, I can't comment on my reaction, but certainly we'll, we are considering uh, an application to the Supreme Court. So to, to appeal the decision? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, and that will be done as soon as possible. Gunatilika last played for his country on October 16 in Sri Lanka's opening game of the T20 World Cup against Namibia. The team arrived back on Monday, leaving him behind. His coach said his arrest is very disappointing. The Sri Lankan Cricket Board earlier said it would closely monitor court proceedings and in consultation with the International Cricket Council, launch an inquiry into the matter. 
In news from Nepal, Nepal's Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Deoba pledged to deliver on agendas including healthcare, education and physical infrastructure as he addressed a poll rally in his home district on Sunday. Nepal is slated to hold general election on November 20th. Nepal's Prime Minister and Nepali Congress President Sher Bahadur Deoba has pledged to deliver on various agendas such as healthcare, education and physical infrastructure in the Sudar Paschim province including his home district Dadildhura. Addressing a poll rally, PM Deoba exuded confidence that the ruling coalition would form a government following the November 20 parliamentary polls. Deoba himself is contesting for the seventh time from Dadildhura. He is a common candidate of the ruling coalition comprising five political parties altogether. On the occasion, PM Deoba criticized the opposition CPN UML chairman KP Sharma Oli for snatching the constitution and dissolving the House of Representatives last year. We moved ahead by uniting after his steps were unbearable, he said. The five-party ruling coalition led by Deoba's Nepali Congress has been in government since July last year. It will compete against a loose alliance of the main communist opposition for the 275-member parliament. For both sides, addressing the high cost of living would be a priority in the Himalayan country of 30 million people. An Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who has been making frequent visits to his home state of Gujarat in the run-up to assembly elections, attended a mass wedding ceremony in Bhavnagar on Sunday, where more than 500 couples tied the knot. Mass weddings are very popular in India, especially among the economically backward sections of Indian society. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Sunday gave blessings to couples at a mass wedding ceremony in Bhavnagar city in western Gujarat state. Modi has been making frequent visits to Gujarat for several weeks in the run-up to assembly elections. Girls who had lost their fathers were married during the ceremony where rituals were performed as per the Hindu tradition. Over 550 couples tied the Nupital knot. The Prime Minister also urged the newlyweds to choose mass functions over separate wedding events under the pressure of relatives and ask them to save that money for their children instead. Mass weddings are very popular, especially among the economical backward sections of Indian society, as these reduce the worries of financial implications among the parents or guardians of the brides. Conventionally, the family of a bride in India is expected to bear the expenses of a lavish wedding and also give dowry to the groom deemed as gifts to the bride which could be in cash or kind. Soccer fans in a village in India's Kerala state have installed huge cutouts of Leon Messi and Neymar on a river as a gesture to show their excitement for the upcoming FIFA World Cup. The World Cup is scheduled to kick off on November 20th in Qatar and extend till December 18th. Soccer fans in Pulavur, a small village in India's southern Kerala state, have put up giant cutouts of Lionel Messi and Neymar on a local river to celebrate the upcoming World Cup. The 30 feet tall cutout of Messi went viral as soon as it debuted on the social media. Brazil fans from the state then quickly came up with a bigger cutout of Neymar, 40 feet tall, and placed it next to the Argentine captain. To elevate the friendly rivalries further, Portugal fans in the village said they also plan to install a similar cutout of Cristiano Ronaldo soon. So it's very happy to see that uh, first uh, Messi cut out race here and uh, that time actually I was hoping that uh, 
something from Brazil fans also should come because I'm a hardcore uh, Brazil fan. So after racing that, I'm I'm really happy that uh, something uh, uh, Messi cut out, cut, uh, sorry, a Neymar cut out was raised and these five World Cups. Actually, this is this is the uh, highlight here. So uh, Argentina fans, uh, they don't have something like this to uh, display. So this is very happy for me. Along with the cutouts of the soccer superstars, fans also installed cutouts of the World Cup trophy. This year's World Cup is scheduled to kick off in Qatar on November 20. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.